So, let us now begin with one example of a static team problem. So, in this example we have two agents right. So, they let us call them agent 1 and agent 2, agent 1 and agent 2. Now, agent 1 can take only 2 actions, agent 1 has can take 2 actions, let us call those actions up and down. These are the only 2 actions that agent 1 can take, agent 2 can take similarly only 2 actions, it's his actions are let us call them left and right. The environmental noise which comprises of all the noise in the system can take for simplicity only 3 different states. So, psi here belongs to a set capital omega where capital omega itself comprises of just 3 elements omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. These are the 3 possible uh, elements of um, uh, uh, omega and therefore, the these 3 possible values of psi. Now, these, these themselves occur with the following probabilities. So, probability of omega 1 is 0.3 probability of omega 2 is also 0.3 and probability of omega 3 is 0.4. Now, the cost function or the loss function involved in this particular problem, remember it is of in a static team uh, the problem the loss function is of the form L of u 1 u 2 comma psi. So, I need to write out therefore, the value of L for every value of the action and every value of psi right. So, let us write this out. Uh, so, in the so for each value of psi I will have I have 4 different possible combinations for the values of the actions. So, for each value of psi I can u 1 and u 2 can each take 2 different values. So, for each fixed value of psi I actually have 4 different combinations here. So, that I will write out as a in a matrix form like this. So, I will first write out a table for the value of when psi is uh, is omega 1. So, this is when psi is omega 1, here is my table. So, you have here on the col on the columns I am writing the actions of agent 2, on the rows I am writing actions of agent 1. So, agent 1 as I said can take 2 different actions, agent 2 can also take 2 different actions. So, agent 2 can take actions L and R, agent 1 can take actions U and D. And so, when psi is equal to omega 1, agent 1 uh, takes action U, agent 2 takes action L, the loss L of U, uh, the loss L of U L omega 1 is equal to 1. And similarly, uh, when agent uh, 2 takes action R, it is 0 then agent uh, 1 takes action D it is uh, and agent 2 takes action L it is uh, it's 3 and agent 2 takes action D and agent uh, sorry agent 1 takes action D and agent 2 takes action R it is 1. This here is is the is this loss function written out uh, for uh, psi equal to omega 1 ok. I can write out a similar loss function like this for psi equal to omega 2. putting in some specific values here. So, this is again agent 1, agent 2. L R U D 2 3 2 1 ok. And So, uh, here you have 1, 2, 0 and 2. So, these 3 matrices here that I have that I have written out together co uh, collectively define for me the uh, the, val uh, m, uh, the function L. 
So, if I want to read out the value of the function L for any pair of actions and for any uh, value of psi, I should look at uh, one of these matrices based on the value of psi and then look at which pair of actions is being chosen and that gives me the value of L. Right? So, this is going to be fixed across uh, various uh, instances of this problem. So, what we will do now is look at different information for these two uh, for these two agents and let and see how the uh, solution of uh, of this problem varies okay and how we and also how the our reasoning about these this this uh, how to solve this problem varies as we change as the information of these agents changes okay so the first case that we will consider uh, is case 1 is this is the case when both agents have perfect information Okay, so, this is when they have perfect measurement. So, these are all static problems remember, but they are just diff different types of static problems. So, in the first case I am going to assume that they have perfect measurement which means that both bo uh, all both agents perfect the information of each agent let us call this I 1 of agent 1 and I 2 of agent 2 these are both equal to psi. So, both agents actually observe uh, observe psi all right. So, in this case now since they know the value of psi, so the so how does one reason about this particular problem. Remember we wanted to minimize uh, we wanted to minimize the expectation of this cost assuming u i is a function of the information of i. Right. Now, in that case, now uh, how do we now that uh, how do we uh, you know minimize this particular cost? See, the, since in this we in in this case, since both agents know the uh, know the value of psi, it is uh, it's fairly obvious what is it that they should be doing. So, what they should do is that we sh they should look at each value of psi and then see which pair of actions leads them to the uh, to the best uh, to the best outcome. So, if they have, uh, so for example, if psi is equal to omega 1, then it turns out that uh, the, the optimal action, for the optimal uh, action for both uh, for, for these agents is to choose, is for agent 1 to choose u and agent 2 to choose r, because then they would, uh, they would both, uh, they would, the, the cost that they would get is 0. So, if agent 1 chooses u and agent 2 chooses r, then they would get 0 right. So, when psi is omega 1 they would uh, these agents would choose u comma r. So, let me write this here. So, um, gamma 1 star of omega 1 is equal to u gamma 2 star of omega 1 is equal to r. So, that is what they would uh, uh, they would do when uh, when uh, psi is equal to omega 1. Now, if psi is equal to omega 2 then it is then these agents should choose this particular pair because when psi is equal to omega 2 uh, is, uh, this gives them the least cost and then in that so agent 1 chooses D agent 2 chooses R. So, so agent 1 in when uh, psi is omega 2 he chooses D and agent 2 when psi is omega 2 chooses R. And then finally, when uh, when psi is omega 3 let us see what uh, what these agents should choose. When psi is omega 3 these agents it is it is clear from here they want the minimum cost. So, they should be choosing this particular pair which means in uh, agent 1 chooses D and agent 2 chooses L is equal to D and this equals L right. So, now how do I evaluate the cost that comes from this? The way to evaluate the cost is to is to look at basically remember we have we are evaluating the expected cost that comes from uh, comes from this. So, So, 
So, this therefore is equal to probability of omega 1 times the L of the gamma 1 star when, uh, when, when psi is omega 1. So, this is going to be L of u comma r comma omega 1 plus the probability of omega 2 times L of d comma r comma omega 2 plus probability of omega 3 times L of d comma L comma omega 3. Now, L of u comma r comma omega 1 is equal to 0 out here. Notice this is 0, L of the second one is 1 and the third one is also 0. So, what we what we get therefore, this 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 quantity eventually becomes just uh, probability of omega 1 into 0 plus 1 into probability of omega 2 plus 0 into probability of omega 3 and that is equal to 1 times probability of omega omega 1. So, that is uh, omega 2. So, it is 1 times probability of omega 2. Probability of omega 2 remember was just 0 0.3. So, therefore, it is this cost therefore becomes 0 0.3. So, this is what we get in the case of perfect measurement. So, now what has happened in uh, because of because uh, uh, we had perfect measurement because perf we had perfect measurements both agents could uh, knew which of these three matrices was actually getting realized. There are th these three different possible matrices because based on the value of psi and the agents knew which exact matrix was uh, was the one that was uh, uh, that was actually getting realized because they knew what the value of psi was. And because both of them knew what the value of psi was, they could both decide what the optimal action was. There was no issue of uh, any disagreement on this. So, they chose this action, this pair of actions here, this pair of actions here and this pair of actions here, right. And then as, as a result of that, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they get their, they get their cost. Now, the most, uh, the important thing to note here is that when there are, when both agents actually have the same information and, and here in particular they have in fact perfect information, then actually there is, there is really no dilemma. Uh, for these agents because they have the uh, the same information. One can as well think of these two agents coalesced into one agent, just one agent that, that is in fact taking a pair of actions because they have really the same information. So, they may as well be considered as one agent. So, this is in fact the most trivial form of, uh, of, a, of a static team when both agents actually have, um, have perfect and identical information. Okay, so, that is why this is well, uh, it is worth starting with this one. So, next we will look at a, a, a different example. So, we will now consider in this case, uh, both agents would again have the same information, but the information would not be perfect, right. So, they would have both have imperfect information, but identical information, okay. So, imperfect. and identical measurements. So, remember omega was omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. So, was this, these were the three possible states or these were the three possible values of the uh, uh, of the underlying uh, uncertainty or the uh, or the uh, environmental randomness and what we will assume is that agents cannot distinguish between omega 1 and omega 2. So, they cannot distinguish between these two, they just know that one of these as is realized either omega 1 or omega 2 is realized, but they cannot tell which of these two has actually been realized. So, therefore, the information of agent 1 is equal to the information of agent 2 is basically this, we can write it as sigma of omega 1, omega 2, comma omega 3. 
So which means that when omega 3 is realized they know it is omega 3 but if omega if either of omega 1 or omega 2 is realized they have no way of telling whether it is omega 1 or omega 2. So as a result of this their action has to be the same regardless of whether it is omega 1 or omega 2. They have no way of differentiating their action based on uh, whether it is omega 1 or omega 2 getting realized. But, but the important thing here is that they, uh, they are both having uh, the same information they, as a result they both have to uh, act based on this, this level of ignorance that they actually have. So as a result the strategy that we that these, uh, these strategies or the policies of these agents can be written in this sort of form. So we can write gamma i of y i okay, is can be is equal to say, either a or b. So if so you, you that means you are taking an action a if y i is e omega 1 or omega 2. So it is either omega 1 or omega 2 and it is b if y i is equal to omega 3. Right? So cons consequently the uh, you can see that the uh, in this case the problem has now become a little bit more complicated. We can now we have to now think of uh, what exactly are the possible strategies and what are exactly are the possible act, uh, actions that would result from them. So firstly how many strategies are there for each agent? So let us look at agent 1. So agent 1 uh, can, can has can his information can be either omega 1 or omega it can be either omega 1 stroke omega 2 this the uh, this particular thing or it can be omega 3. So, it is his information can take only 2 possible values it basically says that the psi is omega 3 or psi is not omega 3. The other uh, uh, the, the, the action the other action uh, the, and for each of these states each of this piece of information he has to choose an action and the action can be either uh, either uh, either A or B. So if it is agent 1 then it is either up or down or if and if it is agent 2 then it is either left or right. So these are the possible uh, possible actions that these agents can choose. Now what we will uh, what we will do is is write out the the for, uh, the policies that that emerge for these agents and compute the pay, uh, the the uh, the loss or the cost that comes from each of these policies so now having seen the case with perfect measurements let us look at another problem uh, in which we have imperfect measurements for both agents but identical measurements for both agents so the case then is this one the one that is uh, written here you have imperfect but identical measurements. Now how do we capture imperfect measurements? The way we capture imperfect measurements is by describing what part of uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the set omega where your you know the omega remember was the set in which the uh, environmental randomness takes its values. So we ask what part of the set of, of omega can be observed by by the, uh, by an agent. So here, what in this particular case, what I what I'm going to assume is that both agents cannot distinguish between the two uh, uh, the two values omega one and omega two. So for them, omega one and omega two occurrence of omega one and omega two uh, gives the same information. So they they have they have no way of distinguishing between these two, uh, but they can tell if omega three in it fact in fact has occurred. So they can distinguish between omega 3 have being occurring and omega 3 not occurring that is what it effectively means. So then in that case we write I1 equal to I2 uh, equal to sigma of these two sets the two sets being omega 1 uh, the one set omega 1 omega 2 and the other set being omega 3. So we can think of this as these are the two, two values of uh, that the information can potentially take. So in that case then the strat how does one write the strategy of the agent? The strategy of the agent is always a map mapping that uh, maps um, information to an action. So in this case now the information can be of two different kinds. 
one is that it can be omega 3 or it can be 1 of omega 1 or omega 2 right. So, it can be omega 1 or omega 2 or, or in the other case it can be omega 3 itself and for each of these each of these cases you can specify an action for each agent. So, for instance uh, so here I have denoted the action for omega for the for the case when omega 1 or omega 2 occurs as A and the action for omega 3 as B. Now, because the agent cannot distinguish between omega 1 and omega 2, it has to be that his action then is, uh, is A uh, has to be the same for regardless of whether omega 1 or omega 2 occurs. So, his, 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 his uh, uh, strategy or his uh, policy is a constant on this set omega 1 omega 2 he cannot because he cannot distinguish between the values of omega 1 and omega 2 right. So, now uh, so let us take for example, a particular uh, a particular strategy here say if remember that um, agent 1 can take actions up and down right. So, let us write out one uh, strategy for uh, for agent 1 here is one strategy. So, it is equal to up if y 1 is equal to omega 1 or omega 2 and it is down if y 1 is equal to omega 3. So, this is for example, one strategy for agent 1. Similarly, an, a strategy for agent 2 would be he takes action r if y 1 y 2 is omega 1 or omega 2 and it action, action L if y 2 is equal to omega 3. Now, it does not have to be that these actions are different. For example, it is quite quite uh, it is it is all right for instance, if I instead of taking L here, if I had written R itself that is also ok. That would be a different strategy. In that case, the agent 2 is choosing R regardless of with what what he observes whether it is omega 3 or not omega 3 that again is another strategy right. So, we can denote these strategies in the following way we can just simply write the pair that is that is being chosen. So, uh, knowing that these are the observations no, we can uh, let us denote a strategy like this li uh, like this sort of strategy let us simply denote it uh, uh, briefly as a pair u comma d or even shorter there as u d. So, this effectively means that u here is this is when what is chosen if omega 1 or omega 2 occurs and this is what is chosen if omega 3 occurs right. And similarly, this strategy would be denoted r r where this the first one here is for omega 1 or omega 2 and this here is the second r is for omega 3. So, now let us ask ourselves how many strategies do we have for each agent. Uh, so, let us take agent 1, agent 1 has 2 actions and he, ha he can get 2 possible values of information. So, as a consequence he can he, uh, he can the, the number of strategies that he has is 2 raised to 2. So, this here is 4. So, he has 4 different possible strategies um, agent 1 has 4 different possible strategies. Likewise, agent 2 also has 4 different uh, possible strategies because he too has 2, um, uh, two actions and, and his information can take 2 different values. So, now let us let us write out therefore, a table like this in which we list out all the strategies of all the agents and list out the cost that comes from them, the expected uh, the 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 expected cost that would come from. It. So, what I am writing here now is is basically j of um, gamma 1 comma gamma 2. Remember j was the expected cost L of gamma 1 of whatever comma gamma 2 of whatever comma comma psi right. So, let us write this out. So, on the left on here I will have agent 1 and here I am writing for agent 2. So, agent 1 and agent 2 each have 4 strategies. So, let us write write these 
four strategies here. So, agent 2's first strategy I will write as LL, the second strategy is LR, third strategy is RL and the fourth strategy is RR. Where remember these strategies are when I write LL, LR, etc., these are to be understood in the way that I have written out here in some in this in this sort of fashion. Okay. So, now let us uh, write out these strategies for agent 1. Agent 1 again has 4 strategies or, a, uh, or 4 policies, it is UU, then UD, let us draw a horizontal line here just for clarity, UD, then you have DU and then we have DD. These are the four strategies of, of the agent of agent 1. Now, let me make this line neater. Okay. So, with these four strategies now, what are the what is the value of j for each of these strategies? So, let us write this out. So, the value of j, how do we evaluate this? So, j here is the expectation un, under any strat, any of these sort, any strategy like this. So, suppose for example, let us take the strategy here as, uh, as for agent 1 let me choose the strategy U D and for agent 2 let me choose the strategy R L. Okay. So, in that case, so J of U D comma R L this would be equal to the this I have to evaluate this particular expectation. So, the expectation is going to be probability the probability of uh, is going to be the value of L times the probability of, of psi that leads to uh, for that particular value. Right? So, I am going to take this as a probability, uh, probability of omega 1 times L of gamma 1, gamma 2, comma omega 1 plus similarly probability of omega 2 times L of gamma 1, gamma 2, omega 2, probability of omega 3, L of gamma 1, gamma 2, omega 3. Now, I have uh, deliberately left these brackets uh, empty here. So, what do I need to fill in here? Remember gamma 1 uh, when when uh, the uh, when uh, omega, when you have omega one here, when uh, when psi is omega one, y is takes value. Uh, you can say y is then can be for as far as the agent is concerned, y is either omega one or omega two. So it, the agent cannot distinguish between the two. So for him, it's it's as good as omega 1 stroke omega 2 here. Similarly, the same happens here uh, for agent 2. Agent 2 also cannot distinguish between omega 1 stroke omega and omega 2. Then if and if omega 2 occurs again agent 1 and agent 2 cannot distinguish between omega 1 or omega 2. So, for them it is it is whatever they would map omega 1 and omega 2 to that is that is what comes here. But when omega 3 occurs, they do know that omega 3 has occurred. So, that is what is that is what comes here. All right. So, this here therefore, is the uh, is is what we are uh, what we can write uh, write the cost as. So, now let us let us substitute and 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 compute this probability of omega 1 remember uh, was 0.3 probability of omega 2 was 0.3 and probability of omega 3 was also point three, uh, was point 0.4. So, I have this is point 0.3 times L of what? Now, L of gamma, uh, gamma 1 of omega 1 stroke omega 2 is has to be determined by looking at the policy we are considering. Remember now our gamma 1 is U D, gamma 2 is R L. So, L of ga, uh, gamma 1 of omega 1, so gamma 1 of omega 1 stroke omega 2 is simply U. So, L of U 
similarly this omega uh, gamma 2 of omega 1 stroke omega 2 is r. So, this is L of u comma r comma omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 which is also 0.3 times again it is going to be the same term L u comma r comma omega 2 plus 0.4 times L of now in omega 3 agent 1 chooses d and agent 2 chooses L. So, it is d comma L comma uh, omega 3. Now, we can where do we get these uh, values of L from? Well, for that we need to go back to this original table. So, remember here we have the value of L of for L of L for any pair of actions and L and any value of psi. So, L so when we when I have to look up for example, something like this L of u comma r comma omega 1 all I need to do is look at the omega 1 table here and then look for u comma r u comma r here is 0 right. So, this this value here is 0. So, the first term my first term here is 0.3 times 0 plus the second term will be 0 0.3 times again I need to look at u comma r, but I need, need to look u comma r, but in the second uh, in the second table the omega 2 table. So, in that case u for u comma r I have the value 3. So, it is 0 0.3 times uh, 0.3 times 3 plus 0 0.4 times now d d comma l and in the omega 3 table. So, I have d comma l here. So, I take d comma l that uh, that comes up here. So, d and l and in the omega 3 table. So, I have the value 0. So, I have then this term is also this times 0. So, the final cost then becomes 0 0.9. So, as a result of this we find that for this for the pair of strategies uh, or policies u d comma r l the cost the value of j becomes 0 0.9. We can now fill in in a similar way all the other terms here I will uh, I will just fill them in mechanic uh, by the same sort of logic you can check if that this is this is actually correct it is 1 this is 1 1.3 this is 1.7 this is also 1.3, this is 1.7, this is 0 0.9, 1.7, 0 0.9, 1.7, this is 1 1.9, 2.3, 1, 1.4, this is 1.5, this is 2.3, this is 0 0.6 and this is also 1.4. So, once we fill this in you we can we can check uh, we can look for what the optimal optimal value actually turns out to be. Once we uh, once we fill this in we find here that the optimal value is sitting right here this is this here is the optimal value. So, this is the, the least remember our goal was to minimize j j that is written here that is there in this table. So, we have effectively now found the pe the policy that minimizes j and the policy here is is this is the uh, is this particular policy it is the policy is d d for agent 1 and r l for agent 2. So, which is effectively it is saying that uh, the ag agent 1 should always play d regardless of what the information he gets and agent 2 should play r if if it is omega 1 or omega 2 and l if it is uh, omega if the information is omega 3 right. So, that is what uh, that is what we find as the optimal solution. So, uh, this this is how we have we can solve a problem of imperfect information, uh, but with identical information for both agents. So, we will now uh, go a little uh, we will go to more generalizations of this in the subsequent lectures.